Hello, Tom Lebecki here with the latest edition of the Armchair NBA. Today, we have another mafia snack from you. Today, we're going to be talking about George from Canada. George from Canada, his real name is Gerlando Shatcha. Shatcha. Um, he was born, uh, well, let me start off kind of with his rank in New York, and then I'll kind of work back from there. Um, he was with the Bananos. He was a capo, but he was very close with the Rizzuto crime family. And I'll get to why in a minute. And he was a heavyweight in the narcotics trade, U.S., Canada. And he worked as a liaison between the um, Rizzutos in Canada and um, Bananos here in New York. March 18th, uh, 1999, he was killed at the age of 65 at the orders of his friend, Joe Messino. Now, on the old show, um, it was asked to my former colleague, John Panisi, along amongst other wise guys over the period, if you ask kind of the word on the street, why did they kill George uh, from Canada? Um, the kind of the astounding answer, the word on the street, was that he um, allegedly uh, insulted T.G. Uh, Graziano. Uh, uh, T.G. Graziano was a consigliere for Joe Messino. He's to my left, your right. Um, I'm friends with his daughter, Jennifer, who produced the Mob Wives. Shout out to Jen. Hopefully get her on the show. Reach out to her soon, as well as uh, another friend of mine, Renee, a little bit um, bombastic personality. But nevertheless, uh, T.G. Uh, Graziano was a heavyweight within the Bonanno crime family. So... Uh, Joe Bonanno, as you guys know, obviously heard of him. He set up ties in Montreal. It really was a setup, a heroin and cocaine pipeline. Um, there were some other interests there, but essentially it was about drugs and setting up the um, drug trade. Now, to go back to why George from Canada was very close with the Rizzutos, is they both hail from a small town uh, in, in the Provincia Agrigento, the Agrigento province. It's called... Um, let me just make sure I pronounce this correctly. Um, Cat Catolica Ediclea. Catolica Ediclea. I've uh, never been there, but I've been to Agadagent. It's beautiful. And they're Paisani with the Rizzuto family, which, you know, anybody knows Italian culture. Don't get me wrong. It's important to be um, from the same area. It's important to be, obviously, from Italy. If you run into somebody here in the U.S., whether would have grown up to what generation you are, but when you have, uh, or you're a Paisani, uh, in this case, uh, Catolica Ediclea, it's a very big deal, and it's even a bigger deal in the Mafia, because you could trace your roots back, you know kind of their aunts, your uncles, and so forth. So he had a um, business in the Bronx, a small jewelry store, made a ton of money, and rolled with the Zips in the Bonanno crime family. All right, so now what happened? Okay. So he was involved with the three capital murder. You guys all know about that from Donnie Brasco. Um, uh, just uh, you know, not, May 5th, 1981. He was a guy who put his hand through his hair when they killed Dominic Trinquera, uh, Alfonso, Sonny Red, and Delicado, and Philip Lucky Jacon in a um, Dyker Heights social club ran by the Gambinos. Rizzuto was there with two other Sicilian hitmen. Um, you know, to help them out. So he's the one who brought them in. He's the one who set them up. Um, and then he eventually also shot uh, Indelicato, or literally shot Indelicato in the head. So when they were dead at that point, they left the building and the cleanup crew came. So what happened? Okay, so this guy is a big money earner. This guy is a whale. He's an up and comer. Um, you know, why do things go south? Why do things go south quickly? Okay. So again, his paisan, uh, Rizzuto, um, he still spent a lot of time in Canada. He uh, had a close relationship with the Rizzutos, um, although he was a, a banana captain, uh, he still maintained his ties there. So in the 1990s, that's when the relations between Messino and Shacha started going south. Um, he was becoming more and more independent, and he was becoming more aligned with Rizzuto. Got very rich, uh, very strong. And, um, you know, he would actually um, favor Rizzuto in important decisions if there was a decision to be made between the Bananos and 
um, the residuals. It appears kind of the first shot over the bow on April 30th, 1992. Um, shot just top lieutenant in Canada was Joe Lepresti. Joe Lepresti was found shot dead in a Montreal lot. Lepresti was a made man with the bananas and was murdered allegedly by the Rizzutos, um and without any approval from New York, which obviously in that world is a very big deal. And rather than Chacha kind of going on the offensive and seeing who did it and possibly uh, getting revenge, Chacha actually defended the killing to Salvatore Vitali as justified because they said um, Lopresti became addicted to drugs. And just keep part to this addicted to drugs part because that where the plot thickens. Um, later on, Rizzuto refused to send a hit team when um, when Messino asked when they wanted to kill uh, Robert Perino. Um, again, Chacha um, also supported Rizzuto on that decision. Um, and it's just interesting. At that point, you know, at that point, Messino's like, listen, I'm building, you know, Montreal's part of us. At that point, it was considered a subsidiary. Um, and that's how Messino looked at it. And obviously... Um, Messino is George's boss or Galena's boss. So it's like, I keep ordering you to do things and you keep siding their way. And again, TG and uh, Graziano and Joe Messino were very close. All right. So now this is where it gets interesting. Um, again, the word on the street was that George was going around, which he might have uh, allegedly went around and said TG was a drug abuser. He was, you know, allegedly, quote unquote, and that for that life, a crackhead. And all these things that uh, weren't be able to be substantiated, um, you know, even for then, back then, um, calling somebody names probably is a death sentence or kind of being subversive is a death sentence. But I'm going to get into why George was a lot more powerful than people think. Um, in early 99 at a wedding, um, Sal Vitale said George had to go. It was set, set up with Patrick T. Filippo, who invited Chachev to uh, a meeting. Uh, with Graziano over um, some marijuana rackets. Um, he wanted to look like the drug deal got bad because although the Rizzutos were considered a subsidiary, he did not want to piss off Vito Rizzuto. Um, you know, they they left a note saying, hey, come here. The, the, the usual, unfortunately, got set up and got killed. Um, John Sp Spirito, as he drove the uh, De Filippo and they shot him with seven bullets, um, a passerby, saw the dumping and immediately obviously called the police and that's when they found the body okay so the american side of the story is he pissed off tg but the canadian side of the story is substantially different um the reason why i'm doing this is i got a strong tip out of canada that i substantiate as much as i could i also even reached out to some people on the u.s side who were around at that time and i got to um validate a lot more um of this information than um than I, than I felt needed to and comfortable so i'll give you what i got and then you can kind of make your decision from there okay so the reason why he was important now you know messino was was actually a good leader he would vacation with his people in mexico um you know he got convicted in 04 but prior to that had a really strong ascension um in the ranks so after the funeral okay uh montreal became the six family they sent joe renda down i'll get to him in a minute joe renda down who was with the risuttos to go to the funeral um out of respect to represent again the six family now becoming the six family uh, and the risuttos right so um at that point that's when the risuttos stop paying tribute people always ask when did they kind of break up when did they sever um, that's when it stopped. Um, just quote from my source. We knew right away because everyone loved George. And again, the plot thickens. The Caruana and Cotrera, they're a um, kind of a intellectual conglomerate that controls a lot of the drug trade, not just Italian organized crime, but worldwide organized crime. And again, they were also from the same town as Rizzuto. Um, he was tight also with Gene Gotti and, and Sal and Andrew Ruggiero. Now, who are the Contrera and Catawanas? They are powerhouse kind of drug overlords. Um, they pretty much built out the island of Aruba. They were out of Venezuela, had to get out uh, for political reasons, and then eventually set up shop in, um, in Canada. 
If you ever heard of them, they are considered what they call the Rothschilds of the Mafia. Heavy hitters, kind of stay neutral. Now they sell a lot to the Andragada, but they essentially um, are the brokers that deal with whether it be the Colombians, whether it be the Mexicans, um, wherever they are. And then they're the ones who feed the drugs, uh, mostly heroin, uh, uh, mostly cocaine now, fentanyl and some heroin. And they're the ones who get it from Canada into the U.S. They're the ones who get it for Canada. And they also have a good lion's share in Italy as well as um, as well as uh, Australia. Now, allegedly, they're considered um, and this is Alfonso Caruana. Allegedly, they are uh, Sicilian mafia made, but they tend to be agnostic and deal with kind of whoever pays them in Italian OC. As I understand, the biggest customer now is Dragada. They still deal with Cosa Nostra, but I think they actually sell mostly to in Dragada. Okay, so that's who uh, George from Canada got his drugs from. Okay, so he got his drugs from the Caruana Contrera, had relationships with Rizzuto, and that's where Sal Ruggiero got his pipeline. So when he died in a car, uh, plane crash, that's when Angelo Ruggiero and allegedly Gene Gotti picked it up, and that was their supply. So when he died, everything went haywire. Um, killed off the supply from Canada, pissed off Canada where they went on their own. Um, and uh, later on, and again, so Lepresti got killed by the Bananos, uh, who's a banana made guy, allegedly by the Canadians. But then later on, Joe Renda, I believe it was around 2012, um, the same guy who got sent down to the US was actually considered missing to this day, allegedly. He's died, um, and it looks to be, it could be either at a, um, somebody who was against the Rizzutos, it could be in Dragada, um, or it could be the Bananos. Again, that part nobody knows. Um, the, the, the family kept it uh, quiet for a few years, um, and around 2015, they were like more public about it, the press release and so forth, and eventually they kind of gave up because the way Canadian law works, if somebody's missing for so long, and you claim them dead, then you can go ahead and get their assets. So it was really kind of about drugs. This is um, Pasquale Contrera in Rome arriving. Um, I think he since passed. This was um, about 15 years ago. Um, and uh, again, a lot of these guys got scooped up. A lot of these guys got um, um, repatriated back to Italy uh, to face sentences in absentia. But nevertheless, these guys are still powerhouses to this day. Um, on the Contreras side, you had Liborio, Pasquale, Gaspari, Paolo. On the Caruana side, you had Giuseppe, Carmelo, and Alfonso, and Leonardo. So these guys are still around. Um, obviously, the pipeline to Gene Gotti and Angel Rosero has been shut down. Um, and, you know, and, and, and they're part of the reason why they did out of Canada, uh, according to my source, um, was that the sentences regarding drugs are not a big deal in Canada. Uh, you can get, you know, 20 years for the simplest thing in the U.S. And there um, you can be out in five years. So that was another strategic reason why the power base was based in Canada. Um, you know, my source told me what they believe. Obviously, this is kind of known that George was getting too much, um, getting too powerful um, right away. They knew they did. Uh, the, the Canadians knew they did it. Um, at that time, after Lepresti died, George did not have anybody under him. But they had 60 guys in um, Canada that were ready and willing to strap up against New York. So an, almost a war almost broke out. Um, again, when he sent the one guy, Joe Renda, he was treated with respect. He was considered um, uh, a friend. And, you know, they were respectful towards him. You know how the mob works. Uh, smile on your face, kind of a knife or gun in your back. So after that, Sal Vitale went up to Canada to kind of smooth things out. Now, there's two sides of the story in Sal Vitale's book, kind of went up there and said, hey, he met up there uh, and went up there in kind of like an amicable way and got out. Everything was fine. According to my source, if Vitale went there heavy handed or threatening or saying you got to pay us again, he probably wouldn't have made the trip back. So at this point, Canada's done with Montreal. Uh, Canada's done and Montreal's done with the Bananos. They're no longer paying tribute. Um, that particular uh, drug pipeline was was fell off. You guys know, probably got picked up by somebody else. That part, I don't have. Um, and then, you know, like, again, um, 
Uh, the U.S. version is that he spoke out of pocket about T.G. Graziano and with, with the same underlying reason that George was getting too powerful. But the truth of the matter was that was just false. That was just an excuse for Joe Messino. That was just Joe Messino still has to sell it to his guys. He still has to kind of sell it to Canada saying a drug deal gone wrong. And then that's when the Rizzutos split from the Bonanno crime family. It also changed the landscape for Canadian or organized crime, which has an effect on uh, both international and U.S. relations. As I mentioned earlier, Fonzo Caruana was in jail um, now, and he was um, really off the grid. He got picked up. He erroneously put his real name on for a wedding. They caught him in the suburb of, I believe, Hamilton or Woodbridge, and that's what tripped him up. But the Indragada kind of scooped in and took over the drug trade from Canada uh, and alleged to get it from the Catawana Contrera. And then from there, recently got pricked up in a project syndicato. These guys actually got off because it was um, it was an issue with how they were investigated. They did some kind of sideways things. Wow, the cops doing sideways things. That's a shocker. Uh, and these were uh, the Philip Many crime family. The reason why this is important is um, the Indragada works more like a global company than a multinational. Global where the head is in Calabria and each of the different areas reported as subsidiaries. But the Drini, which is the Canadian version of Indragada, is considered so strong that they're actually considered their own family. And they are out of Hamilton and they work with the allegedly the Musitanos, the Papayas, and there's supposedly some crossover to um, Buffalo, New York. Um, this is Nicola Caratelli. He's actually in the process of doing the next maxi trial. Um, it's currently going on over 330 defendants. But the truth of the matter is it's a Mancuso family, which is just one of many families in the Tragada. They're still very strong. They have worldwide reach. They kind of took over parts of Canada. The Montreal mob, uh, the Rizzutas did kind of build back up a little bit. A lot of There's almost a death weekly in Canada to the point that they don't even report it all the time. There was a shooting about two weeks ago as well, and they still seem to be fighting, but the power balance seems to go to Indragada. So the days of Angelo Ruggiero, Gene Gotti are long gone. That pipeline's gone with George from Canada being killed. My source says it had nothing to do with TG uh, calling him names. That was just an excuse. It really was he was getting too powerful. It really was he was getting too rich, and Joe Messino saw them as a threat. This isn't a shocker to any mobologist. But what is a shock is, to this day, if you ask the wise guy, why did George County get killed, they still go with why that TG that he spoke out of pocket with TG Graziano. I just want to clarify a little bit of um, information that this was Messino kind of squelching George from Canada. And then a lot more happens after that, which I will cover on a, an addition, another edition very soon. Thank you for checking out the Armchair NBA. I hopefully, guys, you like these kind of monologue mafia snacks. If you can, if you could like and subscribe, share with a like-minded friend, and a shout-out to the show's sponsor, JSV Capital. See you next time. <laughs>